Welcome back to Squawk Box. We are here at the Aspen Ideas Festival. Nearly three months ago, GE Vernova completed its spinoff from GE. The stock now up more than 25% since then. Since then. And join us right now is GE Vernova's CEO, Scott Strazik. Good morning to you. Andrew, thanks for having me. I'm um, thrilled to be here. It's, it's, it's nice to see you. I think this is your first, first big interview since, 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 since this all went down. Um, curious what it's like been before we even get into what's going on in the energy sector, just being a, a CEO of a public company like this now. It's fun. I mean, listen, we're this is a company that matters to the world. I mean, we're electrifying and decarbonizing the world every day and markets that are really growing. So right. I see clear opportunities for us and we're having a lot of fun. So one of the conversations we keep saying it here is AI, AI, AI yeah. is happening wherever we go here at this conference. Yes. And yet uh, one of the underlying issues is that of energy you and how much energy is really being used. I spoke to Mustafa Suleiman, who's the CEO now yes. of uh, Microsoft AI, and he seemed to indicate that he didn't think it was a problem, like that we, were, we, we had enough energy, that it was going to be okay. Do you think it will be? Well, I think we can meet the growing demand. I mean, okay. there's clearly a lot of load growth that's coming. AI is one of those factors, EVs, just U.S. manufacturing growth. The reserve margins very clearly in the U.S. are coming down, so right. we're going to have to invest a lot more into the electrical power system. But we've got the ability to do that. We have the technologies to do it. And with these hyperscalers and technology companies and the balance sheet and their operating history, partnering right. with them, we can grow into this electricity demand. But we've got a lot of work to do. And where do you think it's going to come from in terms of clean energy? Well, it's going to be an all of the above okay. technology. The reality is this is going to be a multi-step journey. I mean, with the amount of power that's going to be needed this decade, gas is going to be important. Right. We'll decarbonize that gas over time with hydrogen and carbon capture. Wind is going to grow and play a real role. Solar right. is going to be important. But we're also going to move nuclear to the left. Right. Small modular reactors are going to become a much bigger piece of you the equation. You actually think it will be? No question it will be. We will be commissioning the first small modular reactor in Ontario, Canada, mm. 2029. It'll right, be but that's in Canada. That's not here yet. That's in Canada. That'll be the first one. Right. you got to start somewhere. And that'll be the first one. And then we'll grow from there. But in the U.S., this is going to be an important right. part of the equation. Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA will be our customer launch in the U.S. Right. We're working with, with them today. Right. Um, big concerns or questions over wind, especially yeah. offshore wind. Yes. And whether that can be a profitable business and, frankly, I and mean, we're going to have the debates tonight. There's yeah. also a political question, given uh, the positions of President Biden, and former President Trump on wind energy. You bet. When you think about wind, I mean, it generates about 7 percent of the world's electricity today. Most projections think it needs to be two to three times that for us to meet our electrification and decarbonization objectives. Wind is an important part of the right. equation. That said, the whole industry has gone through a difficult chapter. We're working our way through that right now. I see clear pathways of success at the end of the day, the storming and some of the scary headlines you see in the news today on offshore wind, right. projects getting canceled, customers losing a lot of money. I actually think that's really what's going to lead to a reset in an industry. So what has to happen as a result? I mean, the, 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 the losses are in the billions. Yes. Starts with price. The reality is when you think about offshore wind, prices is going to have to be much more analogous to building a new right. nuclear plant, putting carbon capture on gas. Offshore wind prices are so going to be get, How do you get those prices there? Without subsidies? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, there are incentives today right. to really help. No question, not just and do you think those, those, go, those go away based on this election? No. Okay. I think at the end of the day, this is something that there's real infrastructure investments that's going to be required for us to electrify and decarbonize the world. Those, there's going to be incentives in many parts of the world right. to support these industries, including offshore wind. Um, everybody here is talking about the debate tonight. Yeah. And everyone's also talking about the role of CEOs in either talking about politics and yes. policy. How do you think about that today? I think in the, in the electrical power system, governments matter. And policy definitely matters. I mean, we've built this electrical power system over 100 years. We right. need to completely transform it in the next 20. So I certainly spend time right. in D.C., spend time with Republicans and Democrats. But is it, so do you say in this election there, there is a, a, a president that it would be better for your company than, than, than another? When we have these conversations and we talk about the investments that are required, especially right. in the infrastructure for electrical power, really comes back to jobs, right. innovation, energy resilience, energy security, and to a large extent, national security. And the reality is the investments that are required for the, for right. the electrical power system, both parties support those investments. So Scott. we're focused on serving right. both parties.